Hey everybody, Steve here. Uh, we're going to 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. There's still some hard-hitting truths, as there is in God's Word, but here it, it especially really hits at home in regard who's a believer and who's not. The problem is, is that false teachers, false prophets, those that are trying to lead the real believers astray, the Antichrists, uh, who are following a false Christ, will use some of these verses to justify themselves and to point to this rather than us testing their teachings which are false or looking at their false prophecies or that they're following a deceptive spirit. Uh, the one verse that comes out pretty nice, uh, verse 2, it says, This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out His commands. Now God calls us to obey His commands and that's to follow the truth to not get into sin, not follow different messages, not to go after uh, false prophets. And it's not to go after preachers or anybody who is okay in a lot of stuff, but they're off like 10 or 20 or 30 percent. And may, oh, there's a little bit of false teaching, but the rest of them is pretty good. He's a good guy. Or, yeah, he does some, some good stuff here, but he's only had a few false prophecies that he's never repented of and kind of, you know, pushes that away. You see, when we love God, we love His truth 100%. There is no error within that, that truth. Just like Jesus said that there's a little bit of leaven that the Pharisees had, and watch out, because that, that false teaching, that leaven, that sin, will and the twisting and manipulation will creep its way throughout the body of Christ, and that leads to what? Temptation. That leads to sin. That leads to following a different Christ, a false Christ. It goes on and it says, uh, This is love for God, to obey His commands, and His commands are not burdensome. For everyone who is born of God overcomes the world. It's easy because if we walk in God and walk in His truth, we don't have to worry about uh, making excuses for false prophets or false teachings or people that per pull things out of context to support uh, sin and, and all those other yucky things. You see, when you're walking in truth, you don't have to remember anything other than the truth. And then the false teaching and all that other stuff, it's easy to see. It's clear as day. Um, and everyone born of God overcomes the world. What we see there is that when we're in Christ and He's in us, we have the faith given by God. We walk in goodness. We grow in the knowledge of Christ, not only in, in His Word and renew, renewing our mind, but we have that relationship with Him. We are able to overcome because when we face trials and temptations and persecution, we respond with the truth of the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit guides us into all truth. And the Bible and God has given us everything in His Word so that we can be free and live. And it's not burdensome because we can present all requests to God. This is victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is that that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Again, false teachers will take this, and people that support false teachers will take this verse and say, well, see, he believes that Jesus is the Son of God, so he's okay, despite the false teaching. But we have to understand, if we believe in Jesus Christ, who's been given all power and authority, he tells us that we have to hold fast to the truth, to not go after different messages. This is the one who came by water and blood. It talks about the Spirit, uh, the truth, and God, and that all of those things will never contradict itself or, or themselves. The Word will never contradict what Jesus says or what God says or what the Holy Spirit when He guides us into all truth. Because if the Holy Spirit tells you to do something that's in conflict with this, you know He's not guiding you into all truth, so you know He's not the Holy Spirit, but a deceptive spirit. Same thing with God. If you hear a voice and it tells you to, to divorce your believing wife, to not pay your child support, uh, to, you know, tell people that they got to spread the blood of demons on other believers so those demons will be afraid of you, or that you need some kind of anointing or mantle that from some Old Testament prophet, when in fact that you have the anointing of Jesus Christ, you know that voice is in God because it doesn't it doesn't jive with the rest of Scripture, just like it says. And it says here that the three are in agreement. And it says in verse 9, We accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his Son. Ultimately, this word is the standard that shows not only God's character and how he deals with sin, 
but it will last forever. And, and so there will be no disagreement. And it always points back to what? Testifying of the Son to Jesus Christ who has been given all power and authority because he was an atonement for the sins of the world. Uh, again, we accept man's testimony and we see that where if we have something against somebody, an elder or somebody who's supposedly mature or false teacher, false prophet, that to not entertain an accusation except on the testimony of what? Two or three or more witnesses with God's word. That goes back to the Old Testament too. If you accuse somebody, it's just better, you better have some other testimonies that are true that people would give before God and in a court of law. Unfortunately, false teachers and false prophets, the ones who are trying to lead us astray from the goodness of God and his word, don't want to do anything like that. They'll point to different revelations and angels and weird manifestations instead of going to God and his word and relying on his truth. Again, God's testimony is what, that's what stands against people. It's not what I say in saying you've sinned and you need to repent. That's God's word as a testimony against you. That's God's word as a testimony against me and my flesh and my sin that I need to repent of. It applies to everyone. It goes on, anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. This is his testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life, and he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Again, we need to be careful to be aware, to be knowledgeable of what Scripture says. We need to have God's wisdom and his discernment so that when false teachers and those who lead us astray will try to lead us to follow a different Christ, a, a false Christ that they'll try to get us to follow a false god instead of almighty god and it'll always point there will always be well you know some kind of tap dancing around the truth and as evident god says if it's false teaching have nothing to do with it don't even eat with such a person but rather expose them so that the other children of god don't walk into that same sin he who does not have the son of god does not have life so just because somebody says they have Jesus in their heart, but their words and their teachings is false and conflicts with Scripture, that's not the Son of God we follow, but that's a false God. Think of it this way. We've been given the authority to test everything, to make sure that others aren't led astray, so that the children don't get damaged, they don't get hurt, that they don't go down that broad road to destruction. We've been given that authority to those who are teachers. The thing is that if there was somebody in authority like a police officer or a pastor or a judge or anybody had committed wrongs against a child and abused them in certain ways, the punishment is much more severe, isn't it? Now, if it's much more severe punishment here on earth, how much more is God going to hold accountable the one for those children that are his that gave them the false teaching, the error, the sin, the heretical teachings? He's going to be on them, and it ain't going to be pretty. So anyway, we'll finish up with the concluding remarks. Uh, 1 John, that will be verses 13 to 21. And Lord willing, we'll get to that tomorrow. So anyway... Know the truth. Stay in God and His Word and love Jesus. Love God. But we have to remember that God exposes and holds on to the truth. He doesn't, he doesn't deviate from His truth. He doesn't tell people to sin. And they all agree with each other. And it all points to Jesus Christ. And that's who the glory goes to. So anyway, take care. God bless. Peace.